So let's talk a little bit about the structure determination of aldehydes and ketones. Uh, we'll start off with some IR spectroscopy. So anything that contains a carbonyl group is going to have a large absorption in the IR somewhere between about 1650 and 1820 wave numbers. For aldehydes and ketones, it's right around 1700 uh, with, oops, sorry, with aldehydes between 1740, 1720, and ketones between about uh, 1705, 1725 for acyclic ketones. Uh, that changes if you have a ketone within a ring, depending on how big the ring is, uh, with larger rings being more like simple aliphatic ketones and smaller rings uh, being a little bit higher frequency. So here we see uh, heptanone, 2-heptanone, and it has a large absorption at 1718 with no other really distinguishing features. We see some CH stretching in the CH stretching region. But this is what tells us that we have a ketone. Whenever we see that large peak, somewhere around 1700. If we were to have an aldehyde, uh, we, we also see that big, large, sharp absorption at, in this case, 1720 for pentanal. Uh, we also have some absorptions due to the hydrogen bonded to the carbonyl carbon. Uh, in this case, we get two absorptions, one around 17, 2720, and another run around 2820. This is fairly indicative of aldehydes. We will see these two absorptions due to the CH uh, stretch of the carbonyl, of the hydrogen bonded to the carbonyl. Mass spec of ketones are pretty well dominated by a few things. What these are peaks we expect to see. So if we think we have a ketone, we should take a look. But one, one of the things that we'll see is that we will get heterolytic cleavage of the alkyl groups that are bonded to the carbonyl carbon to give an alkyl radical and the acylium cation. So whatever this cation would be, we tend to see a lot of it and we get cleavage from both sides of that carbonyl group. And if we have an unsymmetrical ketone, as we see here with uh, four octanone, we can get one fragment due to an acylium cation at 71 and another fragment due to the cleavage on the other side to give an acylium cation with a mass to charge ratio of 85. And there we see our peak at 85 and our peak at 71. A Couple of other things to look for when we think we have a ketone. If we have a long chain ketone and we have a hydrogen on the gamma carbon, we can form the cyclic transition state that allows for a rearrangement uh, in which we split off a neutral molecule and the other species that remains is charged. In this case, uh, our uh, rearrangement splits off this small alkene and we get um, mass to charge ratio of 86 and we see that right here. As it turns out, these can undergo another rearrangement if it's a long chain on uh, both sides so that we'll get another McLafferty type rearrangement split off a small alkene, in this case ethylene, and what remains has a mass to charge ratio of 58. We see that as well. Now that's not to say that we will always get peaks of 86 and 58, but we can take a look and see what would remain if we were to have this McLafferty type rearrangement. As it turns out, that McLafferty can rearrange, I'm sorry, the, the product, the ion from the McLafferty rearrangement may also undergo a subsequent alpha cleavage and in this case, in all cases actually, we get this protonated ketene and we often see a large peak at 43. And in fact, if this is possible, uh, that will often be the base peak. And that's what we see in this case. For aldehydes, when we get the alpha cleavage of our aldehyde,
So that's cleavage here. We will always get this acillium cation, which has a mass to charge ratio of 29. 29 is not that spectacular because ethyl cations also come at 29, but if we have an aldehyde, we do expect to see a 20 peak at 29 in the mass spec. And if that is not there, we, we may not have an aldehyde. The other thing that can happen is the McClafferty rearrangement. And the McClafferty rearrangement in the case of an aldehyde will again split off this side because that's the only side that can split off. And we, we tend to see a large peak at 44. If this is possible, this is often the base peak that we see in the mass spec. And it's also one of the reasons with aldehydes, particularly long chain aldehydes, we very rarely see a molecular ion. So we shouldn't be surprised that we don't get our molecular ion. The other peaks that we often see with aldehydes uh, is an M minus 18 peak due to the loss of water. And we also see an M minus 28 peak due to a uh, loss of ethylene. And again, we see large peaks at uh, M minus 43 and M minus 4 due to beta cleavage and McClafferty rearrangements where the cation stays in the other peak. And those are the types of things we look for for aldehydes. So if we think we have a straight chain aldehyde, we'll look for this peak at M at 44. We'll look for the 29 peak. We'll look for an M minus 18 peak, M minus 28, M minus 44, and M minus 4. 43. Those are all indicative of aldehydes in the mass spec. And in Mars spectroscopy, again, we, we want to look for certain things. When we have a carbonyl, uh, one of the things we look for in the C13 NMR is a peak somewhere around 200 ppm. It'll be a small peak. We'll see an example in just a second. Uh, if we have an aldehyde, we expect to have a proton in this region of the proton NMR spectrum. That's very indicative. There's very few things, almost nothing I can think of, that will have an absorption in uh, the 9.5 to 10 region of the NMR. The other thing we're going to want to look at is those carbons that are next to the carbonyl group, be it an aldehyde or a ketone. We look at the alpha carbons, and if we have protons on there, we expect to see those uh, give resonances somewhere between about two and three. Typically, they're going to be between two and a half and three. Uh, sometimes, depending what's on the other side and what's on this side, they can go out a little bit further than three. So let's see some examples. Uh, here we have a ketone, and we don't have an aldehyde. We have a ketone, so we can't look in the proton NMR out around 9 or 10. We can look, but we, we don't expect to see anything. What we want to do is take a look at the two alpha carbons and figure out what we expect. In this case, uh, this is a CH2, so we expect to see something that integrates for 2, and we expect that to be a triplet because there's 2 on this one next to it, and if we look out past 2, around 2.5, two there we see a triplet, uh, I don't have the integrations. Uh, here we have them. Here we have something similar uh, over here, uh, but that should integrate for two peaks as well. On this alpha carbon, we expect to see uh, a multiplet. It's going to be split by, in a typical fashion, of an isopropyl group. So we expect it to have seven peaks. And if we were to count those, they're very small. We can't see them, but there's one, two, three four, five, six, seven. So that's what we expect for that ketone. Uh, in the carbon 13, as I mentioned, we take a look out around 200. There's not very many carbons that will uh, have resonances out there. And we expect them to be quite a bit smaller due to the long relaxation time of uh, the excited states uh, when we pulse them with radio frequency. So we have to uh, sometimes set up our experiments so that we're even sure to capture those. So if we expect that we have an aldehyde or a ketone, we should look down there. If we don't see one and we're pretty sure we have one, we'll have to take a look at our NMR experiment. We may have to change the parameters because sometimes uh, those are hard to capture. Uh, so we take a look.
Proton NMR for aldehydes, again, we take a look somewhere close to 10. We have an absorption in this case at 9.7, uh, just as we expect. In this particular instance, we're also going to look for an absorption from the protons on the CH2 unit on the alpha carbon. It's next to the carbonyl group. We expect those to come out past about 2, and then in this case, uh, we take a look, it's pretty far out there, but that's because it's next to both a carbonyl and an aromatic ring, so it's even out further. But what we do see is that this CH2 actually gets split into a doublet with a very small coupling constant, about 2 hertz when we do the expansion. Uh, so this is due to these CH2s here. And then we have a big absorption in the aromatic. Uh, for the protons on the aromatic ring. Here's an NMR spectrum of acid aldehyde. Uh, this is very nice. Uh, it looks quite simple till we do the expansions. And we see that this peak out here, which should integrate for three protons, is due to the protons on the alpha carbon. And it's split into a doublet because it couples with the aldehydic hydrogen. It has a small coupling constant, and if we were to measure that, we'd see it's uh, somewhere around 2, 2.5 hertz. Uh, for the aldehydic hydrogen, way out here, uh, should be around 10. This is not, this is labeled in hertz rather than ppms. Uh, you could calculate what is the frequency of the spectrometer from that. We see a quartet. That's because this proton is coupling with these protons and there's three of them, n equals three, our n plus rule tells us that we expect a quartet. So the fact that these aldehydic protons couple give us pretty interesting spectra because we have, uh, here's the protons for one, two, three, four, this is butanol. Uh, we expect to see an absorption for these somewhere around two and a half, uh, we see that we have one there. When we do the expansion, we take a look and we see this. It looks like a triplet, but the peaks are split into doublets. Uh, and can we explain that? Well, we expect this to couple with a coupling constant around 7 hertz with the two protons on this carbon. So that's why it's a triplet. And then it can couple with the, the aldehydic proton we expect that to be small. In this case, it's only 1.8 hertz. Uh, so we see that small coupling there. And here is our aldehydic proton. We don't have an expansion, uh, but you can kind of see some coupling in there. And this looks like it might possibly be a triplet, which is what we would expect. Uh, and then we can assign these protons on the other two carbons uh, as we expect to find them. So see if you can figure out what this is. Uh, just take a look at it for a second. We have some protons that integrate for 3 and 2 out here in the aromatic region. That tells me that I probably have a phenyl ring, and it's probably a monosubstituted phenyl ring. That's due to these. Then we look between 2.5 and, and 3, and we see that we do have something out there. We have a CH2, and it's a triplet. So uh, we look at our IR. We see our absorption there. It's hard to get it, but we know it's out. It looks to be out somewhere around 1,700. So we probably have a carbonyl group. We don't seem to have an aldehyde. We have a carbonyl group that has an alpha carbon that's just a triplet. So we have a carbonyl. And we have a phenyl ring. I'm going to put my phenyl ring here. There we go. And what else do we have? CH2, CH2, possibly CH3. So does this explain it? There's my alpha carbon, CH2, CH2, CH3. One, two, three, four, five. And if we take a look, that's exactly what we have. Again, 
don't make things too complicated. Uh, even though we have 3, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, because these are out here in the aromatic region, we just put both of them all together and think of a phenyl ring rather than having a CH3 and a CH2 with lots of electronegativity on them. We, we probably don't have that, so it makes more sense to have a phenyl ring. Then when we look at these, we just see, can we figure these out? And if we look at the splitting, uh, this is expected to be a triplet. This is expected to be a multiplet. This is expected to be a multiplet. If you count the peaks, they coincide. And then this methyl group is expected to be a triplet, and that's what we find. Here's one more problem. Uh, hopefully by now you see that, oops, it just popped up. Well, there we go. So this and this are fairly informative. Right away when I see uh, this doublet that integrates for six hydrogens, uh, the first thing I'll look at is look and see if I have some kind of isopropyl group, then I expect to see, oops, I'm sorry, this is not correct. This is the what I'm looking for. There's the isopropyl group from these th two methyl groups and this single proton. And I know it's that one because it's on the alpha carbon. We expect it to be out around two and a half. Uh, this one, we also expect to be out around two and a half. It's going to be a triplet right there is what we expect. And then we can easily explain those others.